you. Hello, Internet viewers. I'm the Fairly Odd Gamer. As some of you may know, I've been running this channel for two years, expressing opinions on mostly licensed games. However, today, I'm going to do something a little different. I won't be covering a game today. <laughs> yeah, surprising, I know. But instead, I want to ask you guys something. Are any of you familiar with preview discs? Before being able to download demos online, you can actually play demos of upcoming games courtesy of the preview discs. Not only that, but you can also watch previews of upcoming games from the GameCube and Game Boy Advance library. How does one obtain them, you ask? Well, one could obtain them with a copy of Nintendo Power Magazine for 5 bucks per volume. However, there are games such as Resident Evil 4 and Mario Kart Double Dash that even come with bonus discs if you manage to pre-order those games. So adding the two discs, that's a total of 20 preview discs for the GameCube. Now, like I said, I won't be playing a game for this review. Instead, I'll be looking at this. What I have here is a DVD containing trailers for upcoming GameCube games around the time. So let's say around 2002. However, I've never opened this thing until today. So, let's open this case and see what this DVD has in store. Wow, this is amazing. This is what you call the holy grail of GameCube collecting. Let's put it in, find out! A few moments later. Alright, so after trying out on both my Xbox consoles and my laptop, the DVD does not work. So instead, I decided to download footage of it on YouTube, and that's what I'll be looking at for the review. Think of it as a backup in case something were to go wrong. So let's not waste any more time, and let's take a look at the footage via the web. It starts off with a montage showing games that are more than likely featured in the DVD. The games you want to hopefully review. And what's this? Over 150 games? Oh, by December 2002. Makes sense because the majority of the games at that time were released in 2002. Once the video ends, we finally get to the menus which look incredible by the way. But wait, there's another video playing on the menu. But it turns out to be another montage of game footage. So there's really nothing much to add. Now for this review, I'll be looking at each trailer featured on the DVD, give my initial thoughts on them, and find out whether or not I could potentially review these games for a future video. So if there is a game on there that you'd like me to review, let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to review them for you. So with that out of the way, let's get started with Metroid Prime. Now I am familiar with Metroid, mainly because of Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64. The downside is I've never had time to play any of the Metroid series, even though I own the entire Metroid Prime trilogy. I should look at those at some point. But what is Metroid Prime about, you ask? There was a young woman named Samus Saran who lands on an abandoned space station above the planet Talon 4 as she discovers a sinister operation made by the space pirates. From what I've heard, this was Samus' jump into 3D after Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance. Not only that, but the game also includes first person shooting. Other than that, it's probably a standard Metroid game, but in 3D. Finally, there was the Metroid Trilogy, which has a brief history of all the Metroid games from the original NES title to Metroid Prime. Plus it shows an in-depth look of the character designs from the initial sketches to the final 3D models you see in the game. If I ever get to reviewing Metroid for the channel, it's probably best to review the classic games first, and then cover the Metroid Prime series afterward. Next up we have Star Fox Adventures, or as a certain someone calls it, Star Fox Temperatures. Unlike Metroid, I did play a game from the Star Fox series, that being Star Fox 64. And yes, I also first heard of him when playing the original Smash Brothers. So what's it about? The dinosaur planet is teetering on the brink of disaster and is up to Fox McCloud to save the planet and unlock the powers of a mystical staff in order to defeat the menacing General Scales. Though by watching the trailers, I could tell that this is not the Star Fox game that fans were looking for. 
It's almost like they took a game from Rare and inserted Star Fox into it. Oh, this game was developed by Rare. Well, that explains everything. I wouldn't mind reviewing this game, but it's probably best to talk about the original Star Fox games before talking about this. But from what I've seen so far, it actually looks pretty good and I should play it at some point. Moving on to the next game, Super Mario Sunshine. Fitting because not only is Mario the main mascot of Nintendo, but this is also the 35th anniversary of the original Super Mario Brothers. Not to mention this game would later get re-released for the Super Mario 3D All-Stars with the addition of Super Mario 64 as well as Super Mario Galaxy. Basically, Mario has to save Isle Delfino from a Shadow Mario imposter by cleaning the entire island with help from Flood. A flash liquidizer ultra dousing device. Plus, you obtain some hidden tips that can help you out with beating the game. And that's about it. So far, I've gotten requests to review a Mario game for this channel, specifically the Galaxy games. I'll look at these games eventually. Up next, we have Animal Crossing. Similar to Metroid, I've also never played any of the Animal Crossing games. But from what I've heard, it's doing pretty well. Especially with the new Animal Crossing game for the Switch, and having Isabel as the playable fighter in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now that's amazing! Animal Crossing plays like this. You venture through a colorful universe in real time. So, pretty much like real life. You can get a job, buy and furnish your house, go fishing, enjoy festive activities, and so on. The sky's the limit whenever you visit Animal Crossing. There's also commercials that pretty much play like a reality show on TV, like Big Brother or Survivor. Can I say right now that I love the costumes for these commercials? They're made by KCL Productions, which also made commercials for some of the Mario games at the time. I've gotten requests to talk about the Animal Crossing games, but we'll just have to wait and see. Next up, Mario Party 4. When it comes to Mario Party in general, it's pretty much hit and miss. But I love the original Mario Party games, though I've yet to play Mario Party 1 and 2. Currently I own most of the Mario Party games, including Mario Party DS, and I even own a Japanese version of Mario Party 5. In fact, Mario Party 5 was my introduction to Mario Party, and I love that game. Though personally, it's more fun to play with friends. Anyway, Mario Party 4 plays similar to the original games from the series, with new boards as well as new minigames, all while playing as some of your favorite characters like Mario, Luigi, Wario, Waluigi, Peach, Daisy, Boo, Yoshi, and even Donkey Kong. Even though I prefer 5 over 4, it still looks pretty good. Plus, the DVD features a strategy video that gives you helpful hints that can help you become a master of Mario Party. Now that we have the Nintendo games out of the way, let's take a look at the other GameCube games primarily made by third party companies. Let's start off with James Bond 007 Nightfire. I've only seen a few movies in the James Bond series, some of which include Skyfall and Spectre. I feel that I should watch more Bond films to get a better understanding, especially the ones starring Pierce Brosnan. And from what I've seen from the trailer, I definitely need to watch the Brosnan movies to get a better understanding of this game. It's a first person shooter with elements of stealth. Think Metal Gear Solid meets Doom, mixed with Spy Hunter. You also have these sunglasses that I think are used to help your stealth ability, but I could be wrong. I wouldn't mind covering this game for the channel, but it may have to involve collaborating with someone who is more familiar with the Bond series. You know, like Zero Knight with a Transformers Habitation review. But based on the trailer alone, I might actually enjoy this game. Up next we have Madden NFL 2003. I remember playing the PC version years ago, and I had lots of fun playing it. What I remember the most about this game is the soundtrack. Some of the songs I enjoyed the most were Party Hard by Andrew WK, Suck It Up by Head PE, and The Energy by AudioVent, but only because it was also featured in Disney's Extreme State Adventure. There's also a feature in the game where you can let the game play for you, and therefore make you feel like you're watching a football game. There's also a mini boot camp, which is pretty much the challenge mode of the game. Other than that, it's just football and nothing else. Here's something up my alley. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I may have read the first book and part of the second book, but I love the Harry Potter movies. I actually own the first four movies on DVD, and one of the bonus features for the second movie involves short clips from the video game tie-in. Plus, I own the PS1 versions of Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. But let's see what the GameCube version is like. Now this looks interesting. Clear graphics, plot elements from the movie, this might be an enjoyable game. Wait, when did that occur in the movie? Okay, hold it right there. Why is Draco holding a beater stick? 
I get that he was added to the Slytherin's Quidditch team, but he was a seeker, not a beater. No. Overall, it looks pretty good, and I'd love to talk about these games at some point. Especially with the new Hogwarts Legacy game being released next year. Now that's something worth looking forward to. Anyway, let's move on to the next game. Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. It's only fitting because Crash 4 was just released not too long ago. But anyway, Wrath of Cortex is pretty much what you expect in a normal Crash game. Platforming, bonus levels, Wampa Fruit, Flying Planes, Swimming Underwater, Bike Races, Chase Levels, The Works. However, this game has Crash at a rolling ball. Maybe like Super Monkey Ball, perhaps? And it can connect with the Game Boy Advance for additional features. I'd love to review the Crash Bandicoot games, but I think it's best for me to start with the original trilogy before I review this. Oh, and speaking of Monkey Ball, the next game happens to be its sequel, Super Monkey Ball 2, made by Sega and Amusement Vision. As I, I, yes, that's the monkey's name, you roll your ball through an obstacle course while trying to collect bananas as you reach the goal while under a time limit. However, this game also features the monkeys in sports such as tennis, baseball, soccer, and bowling. And that's about all from what I've seen. If I were to review the Super Monkey Ball series, then I may have to call upon Silver Kid once again because I know how much of a Sega fan he is. Now, this game I've never even heard of, Beach Spikers. But based on the title alone, I'm guessing it has to do with beach volleyball. And what do you know? It is beach volleyball. More specifically, female beach volleyball. Come on, men play it too. Anyways, pretty much beach volleyball and nothing else. Moving on. Ooh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. This I have to see. After seeing that it's published by EA Games, it's a racing game where you race around a track against other cars or a police squad. Oh, and did I mention you can also race as a police car? That's unbelievable. I never really knew this, but apparently this is the second Need for Speed game with Hot Pursuit in the title. The first being Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. There'd also be another game titled Need for Speed Hot Pursuit in 2010. Thank you, Seth, for telling me this. So if I ever do review any of the Need for Speed games, it's more than likely that Seth would help me out in them because I know how much he loves Need for Speed, let alone the racing genre in general. Up next, we have Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. I'm actually somewhat familiar with the Godzilla franchise, with the 2004 movie being my introduction to it. And while I currently own the game, I never got a chance to play it. But let's see what the trailer has to offer. After seeing that the game was made by Infogrames and Pipeworks Software, you notice that Toho is the creator behind Godzilla, as well as these monsters. But suddenly we get a signal interruption. Attention inhabitants of the planet you call Earth. Monster attack on your major population centers is imminent. It's a fighting game where you choose a monster from the Godzilla franchise and you fight against other monsters. Not only can you play as three different versions of Godzilla, 90s, Mechagodzilla, and the Godzilla 2000 variants, but you can also play as other monsters from the franchise such as Gigan, Distoroya, Megalon, Rodan, and even Angurius, among others. Whenever I get the free time, I might be able to play this game, but let's just see what happens. Next game, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. I am familiar with the Pro Skater games, even though I've not yet played them. However, the only skateboarding game I have played was Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure, also for the GameCube. It's pretty much Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but with Disney characters. By looking at the trailer, I noticed that the special bar looks very familiar. Why is that? Because it's the same bar used in Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure. I say it's because this game actually uses the same engine that runs Pro Skater 4. By the way, didn't you know that skateboarding can actually help you become a better surfer? Hey dude, did you just say skateboarding? Why yes, Hux. Yes I did. So is it true? Skateboarding can actually help you out on surfing? It is true. In fact, most professional surfers are also skilled with skateboarding. Whoa. Maybe I should try that at some point. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to see what's up. Later, dude! So if I were to review a skateboarding game for the channel, then I would definitely review Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure. Don't get me wrong, I'll eventually talk about the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games, but I just have fond memories with the Disney version. Other than that, it's just skateboarding. Let's move on to the next game. Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2. It was made by Sega and Sonic Team, the same people behind Sonic and Knights. I'm not really familiar with that series, so it's more than likely I won't review these games. But after a bit of research, as well as watching the trailer, it's an online role-playing game where your adventurer is sent to explore an uncharted planet called Ragol, where you can defeat monsters with weapons and magic skills. 
But other than that, there's nothing else to say except the game looks beautiful. Moving on to the next game, Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2003. It's pretty much golf, but with Tiger Woods. Next. This game sounds interesting. Star Wars Clone Wars. Ooh, is this going to be a tie-in game to the 2003 anime and micro series? Nope, it's a completely different game released in 2002. The majority of this game is vehicular combat with warships, starfighters, tanks, and speeder bikes. But you can also play as Mace Windu and Anakin Skywalker. But that's about it from what I can tell. On to the next game, Dragon's Lair 3D, also known as Dragon's Lair 3D Return to the Lair. Now this I'm familiar with. You play as a knight named Dirk the Daring as you make your way through a castle and avoid or destroy any obstacles along the way while trying to save Princess Daphne from the evil dragon. And from what I've seen, it's a remake of the original Dragon's Lair but in 3D. I've actually played the original game via the Dragon's Lair trilogy for the Nintendo Wii, which also features the sequel Dragon's Lair Time Warp and Space Age, which is also designed by Don Bluth. I actually do want to talk about this game, but not until I talk about the original Dragon's Lair games. Lead on, adventurer. Your quest awaits. Moving on, we have NBA Live 2003. It's pretty much basketball. What else is there to say? Up next, we have Vex. What even is Vex? Well, it turns out that a young slave, who I think is Vex, awakens an ancient power of Monster Claws that gives him extraordinary powers. It's an action adventure platform that feels like Super Mario 64 while looking very similar to games like Age Odyssey and Psychonauts, but I could be wrong. At the same time, he has to fight these blue monsters with low jaws. I'm not at all familiar with the franchise, but the concept and design alone look pretty good. Maybe I'll look into it at some point. The last three games on this list are all sports games. First is MLB Slugfest 20-03 by Midway Games. I have to say it looks pretty cool seeing fire coming out of the ball after it gets thrown or hit by a bat. Plus you can hurt other players as well? That's something you don't see every day. Okay, maybe a few occasions, but that would result in getting suspended or out of the team for good. The only baseball game I own for the GameCube is Home Run King, which I haven't played yet. I think I might enjoy Slugfest 20-03 once I own it, of course. The other two sports games are both by EA Games. NASCAR Thunder 2003 plays about the same as any arcade driving game in which you drive a race car around a track and be sure to reach the finish line first. I remember owning the PC version, but I haven't played that game as much as Madden NFL 2003. And it is cool to race as well-known drivers such as Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon among others. And last we have NHL 2003. It's pretty much ice hockey, so there's really nothing much to talk about. There's also an extra video showing a montage of upcoming GameCube titles such as The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, F-Zero GX, Teenage Snowboarding, and Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Some of them are good, or at the very least somewhat decent. And that concludes the GameCube portion of the DVD. Now, on to the Game Boy Advance! <laughs> The Game Boy Advance trailer shows a few games such as Super Mario Advance 3 Yoshi's Island, which is a GBA port of Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island for the Super NES, Kirby Nightmare in Dream Land, Game & Watch Gallery 4, Golden Sun, Metroid Fusion, and a GBA port of Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Plus the trailer features the Link Cable, which can connect up to 4 players depending if that game is compatible or not. The GBA section also features the commercial to Super Mario Advance 3 Yoshi's Island, by the way, I really want to have that Yoshi costume. As well as a trailer for the Kirby animated series, Kirby Right Back At Ya. If I ever do a spin-off series that talks about video game based movies and TV shows, then I would definitely talk about this show. And last up we have... The E-Reader. What is the E-Reader? Apparently it scans cards that lets you play classic NES games, or even unlock more features for specific GBA games. I'd never heard of this thing until now. So I really don't know that much about it. And with that, we've reached the end of the GameCube preview DVD. But after watching this, I was surprised to see how many GameCube games there are. And I can see why. The GameCube is an amazing console, and I'm glad to still play these games on it after nearly 17 years. The majority of the games I own come from the GameCube, and this is what made me the gamer I am today. And after watching the DVD, it shows that the GameCube has come a long way. While there are games on there that I'm familiar with, including ones that I own, there were some games on there that I've never heard of, like Vest or James Bond 007 Nightfire. The licensed games on there look pretty good, and I look forward to reviewing them at some point. 
Overall, I think the GameCube preview DVD is a great way to show how far the GameCube has come and a way to show appreciation of what happens to be a beloved console. And just recently, I managed to acquire this preview disc that not only features trailers, but also playable demos of upcoming GameCube games. But that is for another time. I'm the Fairly Odd Gamer, and I wish you all good luck the rest of your day or night, wherever you are. Take care, everyone. How's it going, dudes? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon if you want to get notified for upcoming videos. Also, be sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And now, here's one of my buddies to finish out the video. Well, well, well. What have we here? Hey, wait a minute! You're not Santa Claus! Huh? You want me to talk about what? Uh, okay, fine. <clears throat> People of the interweb, I am Oogie Boogie, and I'm here to remind you all that you can now scare, um, I mean, support the Fairly Odd Gamer on the Patreon. As a supporter, you can chat with other patrons as well as some spooktacular fans on the channel. And as an added bonus, you might even watch some bonus content, have your name in the credits, and even get a shout out from one of us. Hopefully not from Jack though. Oh, how I hate him! Anyway, I hereby give the honor of top tier supporter to Alexander Bone, also known as Wisdom Tote. And finally, I want to thank every one of you for watching this video as well as supporting the channel. And don't worry, we'll meet again. <laughs>